everyone, welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel. This is part two of my building the Chaperone. This is an 1884 stern wheel steamer, better known as a paddle wheel ship. I've decided to go dark on the bottom. You can see I have it stained. I've got the plank work done, and I'm ready to move forward. So let me show you the triumphs and tragedies, which I really didn't have any tragedies. But this is a good starter ship. The plank work that I did was doable uh, at a beginner stage. If you're looking into getting into model shipbuilding and you're ready to take on something that's a little bit large, this might be a good starter ship for you. Let me show you how I got to this point. This is my first plank test and I have it in position. I beveled all of these to my satisfaction anyway. I am trying the ammonia solution. I took this uh, all-purpose clear ammonia, mixed it with 50% water, put that in another bottle and let that soak for just a few minutes, not long and not hot, just regular temperature. The water I used is distilled water and I only soaked the part that is curving. So for about Oh, I probably soaked a good eight, 10 inches. So I'm gonna let that dry before I position it. And I tried to go a little bit here so I can have those two peaks of wood come together. Just a quick update, I've done the other side and this time I, I only let it soak for probably two minutes and it's working great. It was very pliable and uh, I will let those dry. So it's gonna take some time to do this but there's just 13 of these that go up on each side, so it won't be too bad. But I would do want to let them dry to see how well they hold that shape. Possibly the most important thing to get on straight is this very first uh, plank on these bulkheads to get it flush with the top of the ship because now I can turn it over and I can work upwards from that as long as that's on straight. You want it to match up well. So I'm in pretty good shape that direction. So I can start, I can go ahead and turn this over and I can work from this direction. If you're new to modeling, these come in very handy. These are just clips you can get at any uh, office supply store or a Walmart. So what you do is you sacrifice one to make two. And you simply pinch these in to take them out. Take both of those out. And then you take another one, open it, slide this in, and then just spin it. Once you get it in there, you might have to use pliers, but normally I can just get it to spin in. There. And now you can use that, as you can see here, to hold everything just in the right spot. They come in very handy. One thing I forgot to do, but uh, now I've remembered, is I need to round this off. See how this is rounded here? So I need to round that. And then this is going to slope. So I need to make sure that this slope matches up here. So I'm going to work on filing that before I put any more of those planks on. I'm back in business. I've got those rounded off and now we can move forward. Anytime you're going to make a curve in wood like this, even as you go up over the hull, you're going to have a problem in that as you curve, see the base I'm getting there? And it'll just increase. How do you counteract that? is you sand off the inside corner. I had a little, I have a little tool, planking tool. I'm not real impressed with it. I've tried it several times. It's, it's a pain. What actually is easier is to take my sanding belt and in essence run that, at, I don't know, at about a 45 degree angle. Now this is oversized wood, but if I take as an example, I bevel it just on my miniature belt sander and I'll run this through a couple times and show you how I do it.
and it's just a very light touch. I'm not pushing down hardly at all and just taking those two edges off. This will be the uh, inner surface and this will be the exposed surface. If you look closely, you can see I've tapered off the edges of both sides of this plank. And I know that's minuscule, but it will make all the difference in the world in bringing the outer edge of those planks together. And then getting to the point where I'm going to reach this curvature, and this is where sanding off the edge, I hope will bring make that curve smoother. The other thing I want to mention is that you need to plank one side and then go over to the other so you keep building at the same rate and that's mostly for the the front edge of the ship so those match up. This is my last small piece and I have the wood glue in place if you don't have enough of these, which I have successfully run out, you can use push pins because none of these holes will show. Depends on the hardness of the wood. And I've been going every other bulkhead. In the past, I've used both um, wood glue and CA glue. The thing I like about wood glue, it gives you a little more time to mess with it. Now, you know, I've got a little piece there I can scrape off. But I've also noticed when it dries, it kind of is clear and you don't see it. Plus, I'm going to do a sanding on this anyway. I've also been known to file these down to make them a little less in length. So I don't have to push them in as far. And also, I'll push them in sometimes and then tilt them. Now I did three in a row. Uh, talking and building, apparently for me, is not a good idea. So there they are, all in place. Just a couple of gaps here and there. Nothing that it will cause me any trouble whatsoever. I've been impressed with the ammonia water solution that I mentioned earlier. I have made it stronger. So it's about 75% straight ammonia and 25% distilled water and you can see here this is quite the bend going here and all the way I guess to right here and this is the last plank there there are 13 and I don't know if video shows the bend that that has but it was it was pretty strong pretty happy with that then here's this curvature here. They're all glued back here. I'll, I'll, I will end up sanding this off back here. I'm just kind of pre-bending these. These are the wider planks that'll go on next and I had soaked these in that ammonia water solution. Put them on here and now I'm just letting them dry. They're almost dry. I've also just done it on these smaller ones. I had put some of them on when they were wet and it's been fine. Very happy with how tight I got these. You can see there's a little gap there. You can see through it right now. And the instructions say you can fill all that in with like a wood putty or something like that. Because I did get them nice and close, I don't want to mess up the grain with wood putty. So I'm going to go from the underneath side and I'll either put putty in or sometimes I've even used like a black caulking just to fill that gap in from the back side because I want to be able to sand these edges off if there's any edge. It won't require a lot of sanding, and I want to keep the, the look of the wood. I don't want it completely flat. I finished all the planking, and this is probably the best plank work I've ever done. This would make a good starter ship because you're, you are bending and you are going around curves, but it's designed for success, and once I sand this, it's going to look pretty sharp. I had mentioned earlier that I was considering putting black caulk as a sealer. Much like olden day ships, they used a black tar to seal. And so in essence, I am also, I put it all along the sides. I'm going to use a belt sander to sand this off. 
There's only one place I used some wood filler, and that was right here. There was a little gap bigger than what I wanted. Other than that, I should be good to go. That's the finish of my initial rough sanding. I've got everything pretty rounded off to my satisfaction. Made sure that the outer edges are even with the tops of the bulkhead. Now I'm going to finish sand and I will do this with the fine sandpaper and I'll do it by hand. Once you get all the planks sanded how you want, the instructions say you need to put this keel part on and it's to go clear to the uh, very bow of the ship. So I had run these uh, side planks into a point here and now what I've done I've, I've used a combination of a sander and a file and got back to that original uh, center keel part and now I will bend the wood around there and I'm going to use black walnut. The ship comes with all basswood but I've got some walnut that I'm going to use there. So that will look pretty nice. How I get this strong of a bend is obviously soaking it in that ammonia water and then this is a soldering iron and I just slowly bend that into shape. You can see that that's going to fit on there nicely. Once I glue it on there and it's in place, I think it's going to look pretty nice. As I begin staining the hull, this will be the conclusion of part two and I will show you the completed uh, hull with the stain and then I will do several coats of tongue oil and I'll polish it up nicely and that's what you can look forward to in the next segment along with whatever uh, construction I start doing on the top side of the ship. So let me get into this staining and send you on your way until I come back in, oh, a few days, a couple weeks. Not sure how long it's gonna take me. If you want more information on the Chaperone and the possibility of purchasing one to build your own, go to Model Expo dash online.com and enter chaperone or search kit number ms 2190 and you'll find information on current pricing that's it for part two i'm looking forward to you returning for part three i'll show what it looks like when the stain is dry and i've got several coats of tongue oil on it i'll give it a good polishing and then i'll continue to build at the same time this is boiler dan one and always thank